So I have a following question for George and it's, how does subsection I and the technology transition rules affect the AIM Act? When you look at the Kigali Agreement and the well over 150 nations that ratified the Kigali Agreement, the United States and only the United States had the special interest or special need to limit the refrigerant through the technology transition rule and the HVAC management rule. And what that means is the rest of the world it doesn't matter if it's Asia, it doesn't matter if it's Canada, Australia, Europe. They are transitioning to the new refrigerant that they choose. In the U.S. and in only the U.S., we are forced in 15 months to switch to only one of two refrigerants which are flammable, R454B B and R32, when the rest of the world, they didn't have that issue. So that's what we're fighting for. Why is it that only the United States has to, number one, do it in 15 months, number two, only utilize the R454 and R32? We say just remove the 700 GWP requirement that was imposed during the Biden era EPA that limits the GWP of the refrigerant. The Kigali phase down alone already brings the phase out of R410A and it allows the industry to slowly transition to a new refrigerant, which we don't have a new refrigerant. 454 and R32 are not new refrigerants. R454 is a new blend. What we need is the creation of a new refrigerant. And the AIM Act and the Kigali gave us 15 years in order to find this. But the way the EPA has written the rules, they've forced us to switch to two flammable refrigerants, do it in 15 months, and then yet again still have to change in 15 years to a new refrigerant that we don't have yet. Remove the technology transition rules, remove the 700 GWP limits, the HVAC management rule, and allow 410A to slowly phase out, and that the new refrigerant not the 454 or the R32, but the ultimate new refrigerant be developed and the transition moved towards the correct way.